So RPA is robotic process automation. Now you spell it out like that, that still doesn't tell you what the hell it is. Not yet. So that's why I just say RPA. So there's really nothing robotic about it, quote unquote. Like it's more so like you're creating software applications, you're automating things, right? Using drag and drop features instead of coding. A lot of people talk about AI and, you know, RPA and, you know, people are fear of uh, losing jobs, like even software developers with Debian coming out, right? So what I will say about RPA is, is that it's, it's great for like plugging and playing, right? Anything that, like if you have a computer and you have any process that you do on a daily or a weekly basis, you can point here, click there, type there, RPA can do it. You know, I was working in all these companies as an engineer and just, I, I did not like it. RPA was the first thing that I found where I was like, wait, I'm good at this, it's simple, and like I'm being praised and promoted, like this is dope. And it's easy, it's easier than what I was doing and it pays more. This is one of the most important conversations for us to have on Tech as a New Black because we all see what's happening. We are in the midst of the boom, the, the midst of the AI boom, the midst of the robotic boom, machine learning, and a variety of other things. And these things have always been around. Uh, robotics has always been around. AI has always been around. But we are in the boom right now where, for the first time, we're seeing AI and robots actually being merged together. And oftentimes, people talk about you know learning AI, which is very important. But one thing that we're missing out on is the opportunity when it comes to robotics. And I learned recently from AD, who's a guest that we have today, that learning actually how to prompt or engineer or create robots is not as complicated as I thought. It's actually very simple. Mm -hmm. So, AD, bro, we're going to talk about this, man, but I'm very excited, very grateful that you come on Tech as a New Black. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Um, so... I keep hearing you say robotics, right? So well, please correct me if I'm saying no, 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 no. You're fine. You're fine. Cause, 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 you know, in tech, a lot of things is marketing, right? So, so I do RPA, right? So the, you know, on Instagram is AD the RPA guy, right? So RPA is robotic process automation. Now you spell it out like that, that still doesn't tell you what the hell it is. No, yeah. So that's why I just say RPA. So there's really nothing robotic about it, quote unquote. Like it's more so like you're creating software applications, you're automating things, right? Using drag and drop features instead of coding. Does that make sense? Wait, so someone that, we, we getting into it already. So y'all yeah. make sure y'all hit the like button because I'm already getting hyped. So, so you just, so someone doesn't even have to code to, I'm just gonna let you keep rapping because you, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. talking no, no, no. So right when now. we think about software and automate, all, all technology is is automation. Right. So we think about traveling years and years ago. Right. It used to be horse and buggy. Then we got the car and we think about, you know, uh, we used to do clothes and, and wash bins and things like that. Now we have a washer and dryer. So RPA is it's like coding, except it's like significantly dumbed down, like it's you're dragging and dropping activities type of thing, right? And you're, so here's an example I like to give. Let's just say somebody wants some software, some code to be written that does something rather simple, right? Like it uh, takes in some input from a user. It says, hey, you know, give me a name of a city, okay? It takes that city, it types it into Google, and it tells you what the weather is on Google in that city that day, right? In order to build something like that, you would need to know Python or JavaScript or whatever, right? Or using RPA, it's like a three-step process. It's like, all right, we're going to use the activity that allows us to get input from the user. Then we're going to use the activity that allows us to open up Chrome. Then we're going to, and then you tell it, okay, where do I want it to go? Google.com. And then I want it to, it's very simple. It's light coding, but it's drag and drop, and it's, it was so simple that I was like, bro, it's incredible that they pay this well for this. All right, so just to give you a heads up, during this interview, you are gonna hear me say multiple times how I plan on signing up for RPA University to become an RPA prompter, which is what our guest today is doing in tech. Now, this interview took place two months ago from the time that y'all are watching it, and not only did I pay full price to sign up for the RPA University, but I also have landed three different offers from three separate companies. One offer for 100,000, the second one for 115,000, and the third for $150,000. Now the question is, which one am I gonna take? Am I gonna take the one that's paying more? Well, actually the answer is all of them. So as being an RPA prompter, you 
actually can job stack, which is something we talk about a lot, where you technically can work in multiple jobs at the same time. Now, if you actually take a look at my LinkedIn, you would have noticed about six weeks ago, I updated my LinkedIn to being an RPA engineer for this exact very reason. Now look y'all, the same program I did is RPA University. I didn't get a discount off, but our guest is allowing you all to get 27% off when you mention my name, when you're speaking with their career advisors. Definitely check out this program because it is in high demand. It's easier than most other things you can do in tech, and the program is self-paced, but you can knock it out in a few weeks just like I did. So again, click the link down in the description below and keep us posted on your journey breaking into tech as an RPA engineer. Yeah, so that actually leads perfectly to the question I was going to ask. When you say pays this well, yeah. what yeah. does the pay look like Mm -hmm. in, in that space. So the average RPA developer right now is making about 130000 right? And guys who are going through my course, and, and again, I went the four-year university route, so I don't know what are, is going on in boot camps today, but I know that I have guys who have graduated my course, right? And they're going on, and these are guys with no degrees, no background in tech, no technical, no nothing, absolutely, which are my favorite kind of people to work with, right? And raking in 80, 85, 90000 out the door. Man. I'm not gonna lie, so I've been in the tech sales space for a minute. As much as I, en I enjoy sales, I enjoy the being a sales engineer at least, which, which currently I'm not a sales engineer right now, but as much as I enjoy that, I've actually been itching to do something different. And I've been trying to think like, yo, what do I wanna do that's different? I wanna do something that's more technical, but I don't, I personally don't, I don't have the time, the energy, or really the, the desire to learn all of the ins and outs of more technical components. It's like, yo, I want to do something that's on the more technical side, and I want to get that bag in tech, but I don't want to have to do the the year, two years of work that it takes to learn, even on a basic level, how to be uh, an efficient um, developer. And so, bro, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, you actually, like, I'm not capping. Yeah. You actually got me pretty uh, pretty excited about the idea of uh, checking out your program. So people are starting out making that much. What some of the highest highest uh, salaries you've heard of those that are is robotic processing automation Ro rpa just rpa rpa, RPA. see I was, I, was try I was trying to be cool <laughs> and he was just like bro just keep it simple just keep it simple just i'm RPA. a simple guy just rpa all right so yeah what what some of the highest um salaries or earnings that you've heard of um you know honestly it's a small community it's yeah. a very small community so so i'm, I'm based in dallas mm -hmm. so small that i know most of the rpa developers in dallas because i've worked with them like alongside of them right so um i don't know i know the most i've seen now this is there's a developer that there's like a solution architect which is a little bit higher but like the solution architects are pulling in uh so it's like per hour if i've done the math correctly it's like 180 something like that for the solution architects um and funny enough that you mentioned sales engineers so this is when I got the idea. I was a sales engineer for an RPA company, right? And my job was to, you know, it'd be me and the salesperson. We fly out to whatever location, right? And they're selling them or whatever. And they're like, hey, you know, AD, we need you to build this little demo bot in the next 24 to 48 hours while we're here. And you just, it's not something that you would put in production, right? It's something you just kind of throw together something really quickly to show them like, hey, this is simple, this is cool, and it works, right? And I was like, bro, like we're here, we're here for two days. So two eight hour days, 16 hours, right? The work could be done in like an hour, two, maybe three, four, right? I'm like, this is simple. This is ridiculous. And so that's when I started realizing, okay, I think this is simple enough that I can teach it to someone else. And so that's kind of what me building this company has been all about, just me proving that premise. Bro, Eddie, so what has me really excited about what you're doing with RPA um, and just robotics in general is that most of the the industries that we talk about in tech are industries that are not not oversaturated but they're saturated but this space is a space that as you mentioned you, you know most of the, the the people that are especially the big wig people in the, in this space already because it's a small niche industry but it's an industry that has gotten nowhere near its peak it's still so early on especially with and, and and I'm I'm saying these things, but I, I could be wrong. But what does the future look like for robotics, especially now with with AI? Like, is it is it a like how far do you see this space going? Gotcha. So again, I, I, you keep mentioning robotics. I want I want to simplify for it. No, 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 no. It's it is drag and drop coding. That's what it is, right? Like, cause it robotics is marketing. Is all that is. 
right? Um, so the future. So 2021, there's about $3 billion spent in RPA, right? In 20, by 2030, they're expecting that to be $30 billion, right? 53% of companies who are using RPA today are expecting to double what they're spending on RPA, right? Um, now, a lot of people talk about AI and, you know, RPA and, you know, people are feared uh, of losing jobs, like even software developers with Devin coming out, right? Yeah. So what I will say about RPA is, is that it's, it's great for like plugging and playing, right? Anything that, like if you have a computer and you have any process that you do on a daily or a weekly basis and you can point here, click there, type there, RPA can do it. Like if I sit and watch you do it, I can build a bot that does it. Um, now on the back end though, it also can interact with APIs, right? And I like to keep things simple. So to me, an API is anytime we're sending information over the internet without using a browser, right? That's not the technical definition, that's my definition. Yeah, for but that's it. good, that helps people, that helps yeah. people. And so with things like chat GPT, right, like you can integrate RPA in that. You can say, all right, here's the, you know, the webhook or whatever for chat GPT, send this information, right? And whatever it says, bring it back to me. And then, you know, from there, do what you want to do with it, right? So what I like about RPA is that it can plug and play with anything. It, like if you, if there's, if there's an interface, it can do that. If there's a back end, if there's an API, it can do that, right? And so it's, it's a great technology. If you're looking to break into tech, scale your tech career, or get networking, collaboration, resources, and more, I have something huge for you. Tech is a New Black is the largest tech career platform in the world. We've helped over a thousand people break into six-figure tech careers and even more scale. But now we're taking it even further with our Techpreneur Discord community. This community offers high-level networking and collaboration with tech leaders, tech recruiters, and more through events, private streams, and daily group conversations. And if you're looking to break into tech, we don't just have all of the trainings and resources that you need, but we actually have partnerships with different companies that are hiring from within our community. So no matter your goal and your career, income, or business, the Techpreneur community was made for you. So text us or just hit the link in the description to join. Oh, that's incredible, man. Now, I'm honestly like really excited about this because it's very rare. Usually when we have guests and we're talking about roles in tech or careers, again, it's usually a career where it's still going, but it it's probably hit its peak already. Not that it's dropping off, but it's hit its peak already. But this is a space that has not hit its peak. It's just, it's growing and it's going to keep growing because mm -hmm. technology, I mean, we all see it. Let us know in the comments if you see what's happening uh, when it comes to the advancements of technology. And just as he keeps saying where, you know, of course I keep saying robotics because of marketing, but at the end of the day, in order for any of these robots or systems or machines to do things, it is happening because the software, like the software is the brains of it. And where instead of needing a, uh, you know, a, a coder or a developer to have to code and develop everything out, like you, you, you mentioned in the simple, simplifying way, the, the drag and drop of certain prompts that are in there, it's uh, initially creating the, the brains, the personality, the operation for these, these machines. And so I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Y'all, I'm nerding out right now. Uh, let me know. I know you some, are. <laughs> I know it's a few y'all in the comments that are some nerds too. Let me know uh, because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a nerd uh, when it comes to this stuff. Again, not technical. I'm not nerdy enough to want to become technical. But I'm, a, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of what you're doing mm -hmm. and just this, uh, this space and technology in general. And bro, so I know that you. So obviously, you're, you're the, uh, the, the founder uh, of, of your business. And you've helped different people get into this industry and space. How did you get started with helping people get in? And at what point were you like, okay, all right, I've I've, I've helped some people get into this space. So let me go ahead and actually build this out into something where I can help people on a more mass scale. Yeah. So I'll take you back a little bit further than that. So I went to a four-year university, right? Got my college degree graduated with all this debt and then realized everything I was learning was online for free, right? So then you feel stupid. And so, you know, I was working in all these companies as an engineer and just, I, I did not like it. RPA was the first thing that I found where I was like, wait, I'm good at this. It's simple. Um, and like, I'm being praised and promoted. Like, this is dope. And it's easy. It's easier than what I was doing and it pays more, right? It was a no brainer, right? So, um, I just kind of had the idea, like, I think I can teach other people to do this. So it started with me just talking to friends and family, right? Like, hey, I think I can teach you how to do this, right? And then, you know, after talking to so many people, uh, one of my really good friends, uh, 
he, we actually sat down at Starbucks one day and I was like, bro, what you're doing is so much more complex than what I do and you make less. You should do this. He was like, nah, I don't want to do that. I'm good. Wait, wait, wait. You said he was working at Starbucks. No, no, no. We met at Starbucks. Oh, okay. Like we were just sitting at Starbucks like, well, meeting. I thought you were telling him his job at <laughs> Starbucks. I was like, wait, you telling me it's that easy? I'm like, oh, hold up. I'm, I'm about no, to sign No, no, right no. Now. So, no, we met. We were sitting, and, you know, you know, because I see him maybe once or twice a year. So, we were catching up, right? And we met at Starbucks, and, and he was showing. And he's a wicked smart guy. He's like, he built a script that will like go online on LinkedIn and have conversations with people as if it's a real person. Can you explain to people what a script is, just so everybody's on the same page? It's some code that you run. I don't know. I'm I, like, I like, and that's another thing. I don't. I'm not the kind of guy. I'm not going to sit here and try to convince I, you. No, I'm more I, intelligent. I love it. I, <laughs> I love it because it goes to show where you're like, yo, I don't know all of this super technical stuff. I don't need but to. But I'm. RP, I'm able to, to, to do these things. I love it. Mm -hmm. So he basically built this, he wrote some code that would go on LinkedIn and respond to people and have conversations and eventually get them to give them his phone number, their phone number. Like, bro, that's next level intelligent. He spent hours on this, right? And I'm like, bro, you can do that. You can absolutely do this. And we sat down that day. He didn't want to talk about it. Then he started seeing me get in and I'm now making six figures, a couple six figures. And now he's like, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Show me what you're doing. I showed it to him, right? Like, and I, I'm not going to sit here and say I taught him everything because he's a smart guy. I showed it to him. Within two weeks of me showing it to him, he wouldn't got a six-figure job. You see what I'm saying? So that technically was like my first student, so to speak, right? Now, when people to ask me, like, hey, tell me about your program, how long does it take, da, 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 I'm like, the fastest guy to ever do it did it in two weeks, right? I'm not saying you're going to be able to do it, but I'm telling you what's possible. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't heard anything like that before. Like, y'all know, we've had a lot of testimonies of, of people breaking into tech quickly uh, through, through our platform and through other platforms that we celebrate, but never within two weeks landing something, especially in a, in, a, in a space like this. Bro, that's incredible, man. That's really incredible. Yeah, and he's killing, he's crushing, he's making over a quarter million right now. Um, How long ago was this? Maybe two, three years ago. Because, again, it just started as an idea. You know what I'm saying? I didn't yeah. even have an LLC at that time. That was just a conversation that we had. And then he went and he took it. And then he got his, his wife is now involved. And she went through the program. Now she's making money. And it's, the, it's just rocking and rolling, bro. Yeah, and it is the it. simplest, quickest, most effective way for someone to get into tech, in my opinion. I mean, no, that's definitely one of the fastest I've heard, especially to, to start out in six figures. You know, I, we I always say six figure tech career, just to be clear, where, okay, you could start out 70,000, 65,000, 90,000, maybe start out 120,000. But it's very rare that someone actually does start out at six mm -hmm. figures. And so now he also had prior like help desk and tech experience. Okay, so cool. even if somebody were to go and do it, like they're going to start around 80, 85. In 10 to 15 years, that's probably going to be 100. You know what I'm saying? Just due to inflation yeah. and all of that. Man, that's incredible, bro. So, look, got to ask, with someone who they don't know anything technical at all, they're listening to this and they hear you saying drag and drop, and most people are familiar with our platform. They know that we don't do any capping or any weird stuff on our platform. Uh, nevertheless, for the person that's watching and that's listening, it's like, okay, this sounds good, but yo, this sounds too good to be true. Because maybe they don't know about it, the different opportunities in the tech industry. And there are very few opportunities like this, like what you're talking about. And so what's a word of advice or word of encouragement that you have for that person that's on the fence where they're like, okay, well, all right, I'm not technical. Not only am I not technical, I don't really understand this whole tech industry. What does really tech even mean? Where is a point that you would encourage them to get started and what's a word of advice that you have for them that could uh, maybe give them inspiration or hope for their journey? Okay, so you're familiar with Country Wayne, right? Oh yeah, of course. I love Country Wayne. Yeah. So he had the interview he did with Shannon Sharp where he was like, hey man, no one has a better interest in me getting ahead than me. So he's like, I'm going to always be my biggest investment. So I took that to me, like I heard him say that and I was like, bro, that makes so much sense. I'm in the point now where like, I'm always going to hire a coach for anything I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing, I'm never starting from scratch. So the best way, and obviously I'm biased, come holler at me, come send me a message on Instagram at the RPA guy. Um, um, and because really what mentors and coaches do is they, they help simplify 
things for you, right? What and, and tech is big, it's huge, it's vast. One of the things people say to me a lot is like, you know, I'm not tech savvy. I don't know anything about tech at all. And it's a huge industry, right? So like your first mistake is trying to learn it all or think you need to know it all, right? I tell people you want to figure out a lifestyle you want to live, figure out how much that lifestyle costs, reverse engineer it from there, and then find you a career that allows you to do that. Yo, that's good. I love that. Yeah. Yo, so I have to interrupt this interview to give you all a major announcement of something that is going to really excite everyone and change the game. So Tech is a New Black is launching something entirely new that's called Techpreneur Saturdays. So Techpreneur Saturdays is a recurring, ongoing tech networking event that's going to happen multiple times in the city of Atlanta. We're going to bring out tech recruiters, hiring managers, professionals, tech influencers, investors, founders, and much more with DJ, drinks, food, all the vibes that you want as well. Now, Techpreneur Saturday is entirely free because Tech is New Black, we are actually paying for it out of pocket as a way to give back to people and truly help more people break into tech, scale in tech, and start your own tech businesses. The only caveat though, is that it is registration first come, first serve only. So make sure you hurry up and click the link so that way you can get registration, so that way you can attend Techpreneur Saturdays taking place in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and then there's, a, there's I, I just wanna plug my guy, um, Charles, you can find him on Instagram. Uh, I think his, his thing is clean reps, clean underscore reps. That guy's a killer. Like he is, I'm 30, I'm, I'm 32. That guy is killing it. He's in his 20s, making multiple six figures. He's helping guys do the same thing, like in cybersecurity. Now, if you check out my Instagram, I'm making fun of cybersecurity guys all the time. Don't tell me you did a cybersecurity boot camp because I'm coming for you. Because I, as an RPA developer, I, I've worked in a company and they, they, like, they shut the RPA portion down and they're like, hey, you're valuable, we want to keep you, we want to transition you to cybersecurity, right? And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll try, it. I'll stick it out, you know, I got I got multiple gigs, so I'm like, if I don't like it, I'll quit, right? And so I sit down, I do a meeting, and he tries to teach me the cybersecurity stuff, and I'm a smart guy. And my homie that I was telling you about, we work at the same company together at this point in time, he's a smart guy. We're sitting in this meeting, and this guy's teaching, and our eyes are glossing over, like, bro, I don't want to, this is, this is difficult. For two smart people who've been in tech, who make six figures, this is difficult. You're not finna tell me you finna just come off the street, learn cybersecurity. No, you're not, bro. Oh, no. No, no you're not. Yeah. It's going to take you 12 to 18 months of studying, and if, the, and if you want to get out here and make a career where you're making 120, 130, 150 out the gate, you can do that. But if you want something simple, you want something that's easy to learn, and you want to start out at 80 and then take that money and invest in yourself in the future, I'm your guy. I don't think there's any better opportunity out there. Bro, AD, bro, this is incredible, man. You legit, and y'all think I'm capping. Like, watch watch my content a year from now. I'm going to I'm gonna be talking about this, and I'm going to be literally in this in this same space, in this, this segment of, of tech. Bro, man, appreciate you so much, dude, not just for being here on Tech is New Black, but, I mean, as much as Tech is New Black has paved the way for, for so many people, this is a segment you're paving the way you've been doing it and you're continuing to, to pave a way for people in a whole different sector that many of us aren't even considering. And so the tech industry, the opportunity is booming in the industry, but there is a lot of competition that's, that's coming in the industry. So it's dope for you to be in a space that there's not as much competition, but it's in a space that's, it's in a niche space within tech that's booming and growing even more. So bro, thank you so much for everything that you do and for coming on. Awesome. I appreciate you, you know, you having me. Um, RPA, you know, I don't think we've talked about the name of the program. RPA University is the name of the program. Uh, we've got a self-paced option and then we've got an option where you're like working with me one-on-one -on -one and I'm mentoring you. Either way, the content is the same and I really do believe that it is the best opportunity on the market today for someone who's like, look, I want to get into tech. I want something that allows me to have my time freedom back because most roles are remote at this point, and I'm looking to just get my toe wet, period, and I don't have a super technical background.